What is up, artists and movers? Welcome back to another podcast style episode with your girl, Galen the Reese. And you guys, we have a name for these now. We have a name. So no more calling them podcast style episodes because let's be real, okay? That's it's kind of a mouthful. Um, and I did I did mention, I did mention a name that I was toying with in the last episode. Currently not feeling it. Uh, currently not feeling it and also <clears throat> it happens to be taken so we can't go with that we're not gonna go with that instead we're gonna call these dance and other things so let me go ahead let me run this back let me let me reintroduce myself what is up artists and movers it's me your girl Galen Larice, and we are back with dance and other things. The show where we talk about dance and other things that affect dancers' lives, careers, and experiences. So that really encompasses the things that I've been talking about and the things that I want to talk about on this channel. Um, and so I'm excited. We have a name. So now I can, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited to make a little intro. You know, you know your girl loves a branding moment, okay? If there's one thing that's for certain, Galen Larice loves a branding moment. So exciting things to look forward to. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about leveling up. On my channel, my, I guess you could call it slogan, has been and probably will be for the next, you know, year or two for sure, uh, helping you take your love for dance to the next level. And so it started with me making stretch content and dance tips content because I wanted to take myself to the next level as a dancer. I wanted other dancers to have someone to help them do the same. And when you were doing that, you realize that there are other areas of your life that if you truly want to level up, you you got to level up in those areas as well. And so that's kind of what led me to making more entrepreneurship content and is leading me to do some of the other content that I have coming up. And even honestly, what led to these episodes and this show that I'm doing, I, I wanted to go from just focusing on dance itself and really focus on cultivating a community for dancers and for me to level up doing that it required that I level up my talking skills and level up my discussion skills and and take myself to the next level and so there are things that I've been learning on this journey of leveling up that have really shaped where I'm going and what I'm doing and how I choose to make decisions and so I want to kind of talk about those three things with you guys. You know, less less chill and chat. Go ahead and let this play while you are making your breakfast. You know, maybe you're taking your dog for a walk so it can, you know, do its business. Or uh, cleaning your home. Go ahead and let it play. And of course, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comments down below. So let's get into it. So on my level up journey, the first thing that I'm learning is that I'm learning to live with taking risk and uncertainty. I remember taking one of these like self assessments on online, you know, I'm not certain which one it was to be honest, but uh, when I got the results, I was shocked to find that one of my main characteristics that it found is that I'm a risk taker. And I had never thought of myself that way before. I honestly thought of myself as the complete opposite. I've always been a rule follower. I've always been, you know, the person who stuck to making, you know, good grades and, and didn't really party a lot. And that that's always been my MO. So to hear that I was being considered a risk taker, I was like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> and inaccurate computer program you have me way off but as i was like reading the description of of how it came to that i realized that i am a risk taker in a lot of ways from moving to a 
city completely across the country to pursuing a creative career to completely trashing that career and deciding to go with something new and start a business and uh, all of those things require a risk taker element and can seem risk takery to other people who tend to follow a more linear path or, or at least I should say a more uh, drawn out path and so now that I know that about myself, I've kind of embraced it and embraced that over the years, I have learned how to take risks. And one of the things that I think guides when the opportunity for a risk comes, uh, what guides my thoughts and feelings about that is thinking about, you know, is it worse for things to stay the way that they are or is it worse for me to try this new thing and possibly fail? And I always choose the option of trying the new thing and with the risk of failing, but also with the risk of it going well. And uh, doing that has challenged me to really analyze how I'm choosing to make decisions. In the last episode I did, I talked about the idea of scarcity and how scarcity is often what, you know, directs a lot of people's decision making. And I talked about how that is extremely prevalent in the dance industry in terms of just how dancers see themselves, how they value themselves, and ultimately how they choose to move as a professional or as a training dancer. Um, So if you haven't listened to that episode, I will have it linked up top and down below. But that really got me thinking about how I am thinking about scarcity in my daily life in other ways. And, uh, you know, scarcity mindset can come up in terms of time. You know, I don't have enough time to do this. There's never enough time to do X, Y, and Z. There's scarcity in, in money and funds. Like, oh, you know, I am not going to spend on this experience with my friends because you know I just I can't afford it I can't afford it and and also an opportunity you know if I never if I don't do this one thing then no opportunity is ever going to come to me and so there can be scarcity mindsets around time money opportunity I'm sure there's a whole lot of other things that can be around but I've really realized that for me in a very specific sense for example I have let scarcity run how I create my living environment. So when I moved to Los Angeles, I moved here four-ish years ago. Um, I didn't know how this was going to turn out. I didn't know anyone who had moved to Los Angeles. I, you know, I was literally moving here with nothing and nobody. Um, and so when you do something that, that that's that, you know, it puts you in that precarious of a situation, um, something that's that risky, right? Uh, it can be scary and it can start to determine the other decisions that you make. And I've noticed for myself, I manifested that fear of things blowing up at any moment and me having to pack up and go home in my living spaces and so I've pretty much been living like a college student for the past four years uh I own very little furniture I have my bed my shelf that I just purchased like a couple months ago and a desk and that's pretty much it uh and and I did that because I was like you know I don't know when stuff's gonna hit the fan and I have to pack up and leave and so I want to make sure that I have as little amount of things as possible so that if everything does go wrong I can just pick up and go and I started to realize recently that like that level of fear around risk-taking that level of scarcity mentality has caused me to create a living environment that isn't all that great (laughs) to be frank uh i don't have like i just said i don't have furniture i don't have things i don't have a space to relax and so uh although you know me telling you guys that i'm going to be doing some diy content and some home decor content that can come very left field to you guys like what the heck does that have to do with anything 
for me, it has everything to do with, like, I am not going to let that fear run how I choose to live my life, run how I choose to experience my home environment. And the fact of the matter is, is that the more comfortable my living space is, the more creative I am, the more I'm going to flourish. And I have to take that risk in, you know, acquiring some furniture like like a grown adult <laughs> and and know that on the other side of that, better things are coming. And so that's a super minute example. But I see that level of dealing with scarcity mentality and and dealing with taking risks and uncertainty i see that come up again and again and again in my life and uh it's one of those lessons that i feel like i've learned until i i realize that like oh actually there's another level to this there's another leveling up that needs to happen in this area and so that's something that i've become okay with is It's okay to feel uncertain about things. It is okay to take a risk that you may not know how things are going to turn out. Um, And in fact, in doing that, that's how you grow. And in no way am I perfect with this. I mean, I still struggle with it on a daily basis sometimes, but I'm learning, one, to not ignore the fact that I do have stress around uncertainty and I do have fear around risk-taking and then to just acknowledge that like that never stopped me before and I want to go into the next things that I do with this exuberant amount of trust in myself that I did when I first took some of the biggest risks of my life. The second thing that I've come to learn on my level up journey is that I care less about dance and more about people. I feel like dance because it is so ornamental. People can often forget that that is a person. Um, And having been that person who is looked at mostly as a side piece, not not that kind of side piece, y'all, but you know what I'm saying, a a decorative piece in in a show or, you know, like the sexy eye candy in something. Which ain't nothing wrong with looking sexy. Y'all know I love to get a little cute and hop into heels class every now and then. But it's easy to forget that that person is a person. And it's easy to forget that that person has their own things that uh, that drive their passion for dance. Everyone thinks that people who dance dance because they just love dance so incredibly much. And it's just so fun to be on stage. And like all they want to do is be a professional dancer and dance, eat, sleep, breathe, dance, live dance. You don't love dance if you don't always do dance. It's not like that for everyone. And I know that because it's not like that for me. And I'm sure it is like that for some people. But the older that I've gotten, the more that I'm realizing that uh, in order for me to stay in this dance game, meaning, you know, continue to be a voice in this space, I have to realize that beyond the dance, there are people who I care about making life better for. There are people who I care about hearing their life experiences and I care about hearing what's shaped their creative eye and I care about what makes them excited about the things that they're going to do in the future. And, you know, that's why, honestly, the show exists is because I was kind of sick of just talking about how to get more flexible and how to turn more and how to kick higher. And I was like, I want to have real conversations with people and I know dancers are capable of it I know that they are it's just that we aren't often asked what our opinions are on things um and and so that's something that's become even more important for me and so in my journey of leveling up what I've been asking myself is okay so if I care more about people than I do about dance in general 
what's next? What does that mean next? And that's kind of what has led my decision making. And for me, that's something that's going to continue to lead my decision making, not only on this channel, but just how I choose to move through the world. What kind of things I decide to, you know, co-sign with my word or my presence or all of the above. Um, and how can I create spaces for dancers so that they do feel like they're more than just a dancer? So that they do feel like they're a person. So that they do feel like, you know, I love to dance, but I also am a mom. And I also am a wife. And I also, you know, all of these other titles that aren't just titles, you know, they're whole experiences in themselves. And honestly, that gets me excited because then the door becomes so much more open. Then there's so many other things we can talk about. Hence dance and other things, y'all feel me? <laughs> so yeah, I, I care way more about people than I do about dance. And that's exciting to me. And I'm excited to see how that continues to, to shape how I level up next. Now, the last thing that I have learned on my level up journey has to do with the work aspect of it. I am incredibly type A. Incredibly type A. Like, I used to, when I was in second grade, my parents used to be kind of worried. <laughs> because of how hard I was on myself when it came to my grades and I wanted things to be perfect and why isn't this just as such and and I and every year I think I'm getting over that newsflash I'm not okay we could say that's a bonus on this list but one of the things that I'm really learning on this level up journey is that no one is paying attention that close I think when we are setting out to get to this next level in our lives or in our work we can become so focused on the minute details because that's our job right that's actually that's how the growth happens is we have to focus on the details because in focusing on the details you realize the things that you haven't been paying attention to or the habits that you've had that have shaped why you are where you are now and what things you have to change in order to get to a different place and so that's our job is to notice those details but we can start to believe that because we're focusing so much on them that everyone else does too and i'm learning that that's not true like People actually aren't paying attention that close. A YouTuber that I love, she goes by Evelyn from the internets. Love her, been loving her. Uh, she said something on her channel once that really changed things for me. She said, never be afraid to let people see you trying. And I think oftentimes it's not so much the trying and the failing that makes us nervous it's the trying and the failing publicly that makes us nervous it's the trying and the failing that people will see happening it's easy to be excited about getting successful when no one has had to see the crappy stuff and so the thought of someone seeing the crappy stuff can make us super nervous but like I said, what I'm noticing is that no one actually pays that close of attention. <laughs> no one is actually checking your Instagram and your Twitter and your YouTube channel and they're running back and rewinding and playing that line over again. Oh, she said that just like that. I'm going to write that down. So if she ever says anything contrary to that, I'm going to jump on her. No one's paying attention that close. And if they are, then... They are probably people who don't have your best interests at heart anyway. They're probably people who you actually aren't even trying to target anyway. They probably aren't people who are your people anyway. Uh, you know, I'm still small in this internet game and there is a level of uh, safety in being small. Um because most people who find my stuff they already were kind of 
in my general sphere of, of influence, meaning they already were, you know, they're already dancers or they're already, you know, people pursuing creative careers. And so when I'm small like this, I don't really get a lot of negativity in my comments. I really, I really don't. It's mostly positive stuff. I could count on one hand how many times I've gotten a negative comment. But I know that when people do get bigger, then there are all of these other voices who decide to come in and they start to contribute to a conversation that wasn't even directed to them in the first place. Um, And those people, they're here for this one conversation. They actually haven't been paying attention. They haven't been paying that close of attention. Uh, So who are they to be able to speak on what it is you're saying and what it is you're doing when your stuff isn't for them? And so I'm just learning that as I am slowly growing, just keeping in mind, like, who are the people I want to make stuff for? And how can I make stuff for them in the most genuine way possible without being scared of, you know, possibly messing up? And that's the great thing about being small is that no one's really watching that close. So you can make mistakes, you can try different things. And I feel like when people are small or when they don't have an audience at all, this fear of like what people are going to say is like the first thing that hops in their mind. And I'm like, darling, that's the last thing you should be worried about. You should be worried about if you can make a great YouTube video, period. You should be worried about if you can photograph a great photo for Instagram. Like what somebody else has to say doesn't nearly matter as much right now. And when you start to do things that are more in line with who you are, when you get bigger, those people, they still don't matter. They still don't matter. So no one is paying attention that close. Don't let the fear of people seeing you fail, possibly, scare you from trying anything at all. Um, And that doesn't just apply to dance. That applies to relationships. That applies to career. Um, Yeah, it applies to a lot of stuff. And so those are the three things that I really have learned. One, I'm learning to live with taking risk and uncertainty. And I'm realizing that that's like just kind of how life is. Like I'm never going to have the full answer to things. And even when I do my best to plot it out and chart it and look at statistical trends and all of the things, I still don't know. I still don't know. And what I do know is that I would much rather take a step forward that could possibly lead me up a mountain then stay where I am and stay in a valley. Second, I'm learning that I care less about dance and more about people and caring about people means that I'm called to speak on other things. I'm called to share my thoughts on other things. I'm called to hear other people's perspectives on things if I truly do care about people more than I do about dance. Um, and I do. So that's something I'm excited to do. And third, no one's paying attention that close. No one is paying attention that close. There's no need for you to worry about what everyone is going to say about every little thing that you do or say, because even if they do notice, there's something that's happening tomorrow that's going to catch their attention and boom, they're focused on that now. You're yesterday's news. And if there's anything that really gives me a sense of peace. It's like, if I do mess up, I know that I'm going to be yesterday's news at some point. So, hmm, how do you guys feel about that? Do you feel like you're okay with taking risks? Do you feel like you're a risk taker? Because like I said, that's not something that I saw myself as for sure. But over time, I've learned that not only is that who I am, but that's something that I have to embrace if I am choosing to level up and make some moves, and change some things for the better. And uh, I do because I care about people at the end of the day. Um, And because those two things are true, I can't worry about what everyone has to say or what everyone's going to think because they're not watching that close. And even if they are, chances are they don't matter. So let me know in the comments down below I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Dance and Other Things. I am so excited to keep making these episodes for you guys. Yes, I have some other content coming. Like I said, your girl is type A, so I'm planning things out. I'm storyboarding. I am 
you know, one thing about me is that the next thing that I do, I want it to be the next level of quality. And uh, for me, that requires me taking some time away so that I can really reflect, you know, uh, go back and listen to the episode on the creative cycle. I really talk about the three stages of the creative cycle and I am totally in the rest stage. Uh, rest and analyze. So that's what I'm doing, preparing to bring some great stuff back to you guys, and I promise it will be here soon. Love you guys, and I will see you in my next video next weekend. Later!